Welcome back. I'm Elaine Reyes. Cuba is well known as producing the world's finest cigars. With a long tradition using the best homegrown tobacco, hand-rolled by skilled workers called torcedores. Those same workers are also some of the most literate and educated on the Caribbean island, thanks to another tradition at the cigar factories. For more than 150 years, factory readers have told the stories of love, life, and history as the cigar workers sort, roll, and cut tobacco. As correspondent Michael Voss explains, some may argue the job of this professional storyteller is crucial to the quality of the famous Cuban cigar. Some say it's the rich, fertile soil and the knowledge of the farmers which enables Cuba to grow the finest tobacco leaves. Others point to the skill and artistry of the workers who create the most sought-after and exclusive hand-rolled cigars in the world. But there is another secret to success, the factory reader. Grisel Valdez is one of more than 200 professional storytellers and readers employed in cigar factories around the country. In the morning, she reads the newspaper out loud, and in the afternoon, it's time for books and magazines. The week we visited, it was a Cuban detective thriller. It's the workers who decide what books they want Grisel Valdez to read. Existe una comisión de lectura, un presidente, dos vocales, elegidos por los propios trabajadores. Entonces, ellos me traen libros, cuando yo termino de leer algunos, y después se hace un escrutinio, puesto por puesto, y el que mayor votación tenga es el libro que se lee. So what are the most common requests she receives? Policiaca, de amor, de historia, de sexo, de curiosidades. Les gusta mucho lo, la, las historias eh, de otros países también. Hand rolling cigars is a highly skilled but repetitive job that demands an enormous amount of concentration. And the tradition of using live readers dates back to a time before the radio had been invented. All of the workers have strict production quotas, and listening to the reader helps keep their minds on the job. Mabel Vizcaino has been at the factory for the past nine years and really appreciates the system. It's fundamental. There are moments that the torcedor needs to read the lecture, because it helps in the acceleration of the norms. When you're a little bit caído, there's a moment that you're a little bit caído, and it helps, it stimulates. Yamile Fuentes has spent more than 30 years, her whole working life, hand rolling cigars. What do you think about having somebody read to you rather than just listening to the radio? These are the old cigar marks, Romeo and Juliet. The tradition of reading books and newspapers dates back to the 1860s. Historian Zoe Nocedo is director of the Cigar Museum in Havana. She believes that this encouraged reading and literacy amongst the cigar rollers, who were generally better informed about current affairs than most workers of that era. The result, Zoe Nocedo says, is that they were at the forefront of organized labor in Cuba. Llenarlo de lecturas de diferentes tipos era contribuir a la capacitación, era contribuir al nivel cultural y por supuesto contribuir a la conciencia de clase de este sector. Y esto fue demostrado en que fueron los primeros en organizarse en gremios, fueron los primeros en constituir su sindicato, fueron los que impulsaron el primer congreso obrero en 1890. In the past, if the workers really liked a book, they'd ask the factory owner to name a brand after it. 
This one is inspired by Shakespeare's play Romeo and Juliet and boasts one of the most attractive boxes of any of the cigars. Another of Cuba's top-selling cigars is the Monte Cristo range, named after the Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. There was a time when the custom of using live readers spread to cigar factories in the United States, Mexico and Spain. But today, Cuba stands proud as the only country where the tradition remains. Our thanks to Michael Voss for that report. Cuba has just been awarded the Cigar Reader National Heritage Status. They are now asking the United Nations Cultural Organization, UNESCO, to include the readers on their list of the world's intangible human treasures. That brings us to the conclusion of our broadcast this week. You can find us on the web at cctv-america.com and you can also find us on Facebook at cctvamerica.com. Please join us again next week for another edition of America's Now. See you then.